Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to look at something quite exciting. The Old Realms mod, the Warhammer Fantasy Conversion mod for Bannerlord is getting a massive update very soon. The developers have granted me a little bit of early access so I can show you some of the changes and as you can see from the very beginning you've got two new playable factions. The Azrae, the Wood Elves, and the Eonir, which are a hybrid of High Elf and Wood Elf. Uh, it's kind of like a weird sub-race which you can find in the Terra territories of the Empire. Obviously, as these are introduced as complete new races, you do have a lot to play around with when you're creating your character. There is the class system also, which is exclusive to this mod, meaning that you can become a spellcaster, you can become a waywatcher. There's a lot to play around with. And not only that, but the mod has gotten absolutely massive. And when I say massive, I'm saying it's increased in size by around double, if not more, because now they've added in the rest of Bretonia, the territories of Athaloran, and the rest of the Empire. I'm just showcasing right now castles and cities, not even the small towns, and you can see that there is a absolute load of locations for you to play around with. It's actually freaking huge. I've been playing with my own time, believe me, Doing a full map conquest is going to take a long, long time. There's a bunch of minor factions there too, uh, including the Necrarch Vampires. There's a bunch of smaller little things to play around with. And yeah, the modders have gone full out, which is why the update has taken so long. So if you want to play in Marienburg, if you want to go up north to Nordland to deal with some Chaos Marauders, because there's a lot of stuff to fight around there, you're definitely going to see exactly what you want there. Now... The big thing is all the areas are quite large. You know, Athaloran is pretty big with how it stands. You've got the Oak of Ages and everything, which is going to allow you to buff up your faction because each of the factions now have some unique mechanics. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but it's stunning. Remember the Warhammer 1 map? that had like a little bit of Athaloran uh, with some Snowlands and so on? It's pretty much very similar to that. It's really, really impressive. You got a bunch of different biomes to showcase on how big Athaloran is really. And even then, the scope is going to be very hard to, to copy considering that Athaloran kind of works in a very similar way to the TARDIS for Doctor Who. Seeing the areas just expanded so heavily means that you're going to have a lot more wars coming in, a lot more factions fighting against each other, and just most importantly, it's just going to be a lot more fun. The system as it stands is already quite good, but it was limited in terms of the size of Bretonia and the Empire, so seeing this map just get much, much larger allows you to play around a lot more and potentially fight with more different and varied enemies. Since there's now six playable factions, and obviously there is a minor unplayable faction at the moment for Chaos, hopefully it won't take too long to actually get a playable Chaos faction. The Empire is huge. Now, the Vampire Counts don't have the defense of being in the corner of the map. It's been expanded upon there, which means, obviously, there's going to be a lot more fighting happening, and Manfred will dominate. So much details here, especially with all the towns and cities. It's very difficult, very, very difficult, with how Warhammer Fantasy has evolved over the years to find consistent mapping. So I imagine that this must have taken a long time long time to do so but it looks and feels absolutely amazing there is a lot more to come with other locations obviously hopefully in down the line we'll be able to see a lot more detail um, opening up for a little bit down south and possibly up north as those areas have been kind of mapped out but time will tell especially as these updates do take a while to do it's basically rewriting code for a engine which struggles and uh, <laughs> then adding in everything else to it. You can see the basis of the Southern Realms, Astalia, Talia, and a bit of the Border Princes and a little bit of the Badlands too with the remaining Karas Ankor over there and yeah Albion and a bit of Norska. I don't know exactly what the devs plans are for that but it would be kind of cool to be able to see some Albion Giants especially as monsters have started being added in. Just one right now it's the Minotaurs for the Beastmen but, uh, but yeah they can hit you hard. We're going to showcase a little bit of that in a little bit too. All right so there is a massive amount of different units being added in. We're not going to go over all of them but here's the basis for just some of the Wood Elves. You have a lot of options there. You do also get Stag Knights by the way and Dryads and Tree Men. I forgot about the tree men when I was talking about the monsters. Uh, we'll be showcasing them in a little bit here. The armor looks stunning. Very current 8th edition styling there. So it's very much that what you're used to, especially if you've been playing Total War Warhammer. So yeah, no, no complaints whatsoever. The, the idea of just how much 
They look so good. They look so good, especially with Bannerlord being kind of weird there. But there's great Stagnites. There are Tree Men. The Dryads look pretty grim, actually. Like, really, really grim. It's nice to see that interpretation coming in. I can't wait to see how this is done. Like, the Tree Men, it's really hard to see, by the way. It's because uh, of the scaling. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I can't wait to see how they do it with the Orcs and maybe even Skaven in the future. But Orcs, I think, was something that they confirmed. Or at least I hope so. Because it's kind of hard to be in the Old World without actually seeing some Orcs here and there. There is a separate faction, by the way, in terms of the units for the Ionia, which are the kind of sub-race there. The idea is they're supposed to be very different, and that's something that's been interpreted in lore very much more with the High Elf styling, which is pretty damn cool. There are some High Elf units, there are some Dark Elf units also that you can see and you'll be able to fight around with, so the interpretation is there. You're going to be seeing so much more uh, for this mod becoming a lot more fleshed out. My favorite thing is seeing more marked Chaos Warriors, especially the Sinesh ones, they look really damn good. I'm really happy with what we've been able to see here, because again, it is just incredibly special. Uh, I'm not showing off the stats, I'm just going around for the units themselves. There's some Norskin Raiders now too, so you're not going to be seeing loads and loads of bandits. Now you're going to start seeing more Norskins, a lot more Beastmen, um, it's just more immersion rather than just Outlaws, Outlaws and Outlaws. I have also seen in this version of the mod, it's not as swarmed as it was in the previous version, where um, in certain parts of Bretonia, for example, it was just swarming with beastmen to the point that if you were starting off a campaign, walking through there was a death trap. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's better now, at least, and that's the most important thing. Obviously, when it comes to new playable races, that means that you do have some new classes to play around with with the career system. For example, if you play as the Wood Elves, you'll have access to the Way Watcher, so you'll get the Arrow of Kurnos, and then you'll get a bunch of different stuff with Scout, Way Watcher, and Way Stalker as you start leveling up and getting into higher tier Renown, which will allow you to get a lot of bonuses. It does vary, and there has been changes for even the ones like the Empire. So you're going to be playing around with this a lot. There's a lot more replayability now. I mean, there was already a lot anyway with the other version of the mod, the one that's currently live. But say, for example, if you decide to play as the Empire now, and you go through the whole system of picking a Warrior Priest career, well, now you'll have the option of going with the Church of Sigma or the Church of Ulrich. That means that if I go Church of Ulrich, I'll have a different ability for my career and also some different bonuses, so it's very different type of playstyle compared to the actual Warrior Priest of Sigma. Again, replayability being a massive thing over here, and it continues even further. So I'm not going over every change because, you know, there is quite a lot. But if you're playing as the vampires, well, here you get to choose your bloodline. Von Karstein, Blood Knight, or Necroc. Again, some different changes to your career paths and sometimes a visual change as the Necroc vampires have the more traditional Nosferatu look. So if you like to roleplay for your campaigns, which I tend to want to do when I play as a Bretonian, for example, or when I play as an Imperial, I'll only get those types of units that fit with my character's theme. Well, now I can do that again with the vampires. There are systems coming into place where each of the factions has their own unique resource, where the Wood Elves, for example, have Harmony, and Harmony can be used at the Oak of Ages to be able to get some very strong bonuses towards you, and also any units that you may have. But this also stems to others, right? There's uh, Dark Magic for the Vampires, you'll be using that to upgrade your troops, for example. There is so much to go through, and every faction now basically feels like if you're kind of playing like Total War, where everyone feels very different. In Vanilla Bannerlord, for example, everyone was kind of the same. You had some bonuses for, say, for example, more horse risers with the Kazuids, but uh, more skirmishy with the Azrae, but yeah, you know, it felt too samey, right? Because you could ignore that. Here, you are incentivized to go through different styles of play. And yes, before you ask, the Wood Elf territories are represented in a very law-friendly manner, meaning that you're not going to be seeing loads of walls and stuff, but you are going to be seeing natural water bridges to be able to protect yourself. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of tree houses. Just what we've seen from very, very, and I mean very, faint artwork from Games Workshop. So, you know, hats off to the environment team for this mod. It must not have been easy trying to decide how to do this. But it's absolutely pretty. It's stunning, really. 
it looks really, really cool, and it's fun to fight the Wood Elves, if you're prepared to deal with a lot of range, by the way. It's, I think, something that you need to be prepared for. But, yeah, other than that, I mean, yeah, it kind of feels a little bit like ESO, in a sense. You know, walking around Velenwood and so on. But when it comes to Wood Elf factions, they're all going to be very similar. So this is where, I guess, inspiration kind of meets inspiration. And lastly, the modders have done their own interpretation of joining other people's warbands, meaning that as you start your game, you can join up with, say, for example, Maris Lightdorf and be a hireling. This means that you'll be able to join his army, his troop, and you'll be getting paid. Not only that, but as you walk around, you'll be getting experience. Depending on the faction, for the Empire, for example, you can get shock troops uh, training, target practice, gunpowder, haggling, which means that you can get trade sorted without having to actually trade, or eavesdropping. This is all pretty cool. It does vary on the different type of faction, but it does mean that you'll be able to increase your skill points without having to really focus on that thing. Most specifically, the trade one is... It's god-awful to level up sometimes. Uh, you, you need a, a separate add-on for that and <laughs> it becomes a problem. But yeah, this is a really, really cool mod. The fact is that you'll be able to join war and you can also avoid the combat. You don't have to jump in there. It depends if you feel up to it or you have no HP or you just don't care. So yeah, definitely a massive update. I can't wait to see this properly released. I don't know exactly when it's going to release, but I know that the developers have been busy getting ready for that, so it's only a matter of time now. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below, and for those of you who don't have Bannerlord just yet, but want to see how the system works or get ready with that, in Instant Gaming, it's actually right now for a pretty good discount. In the link below, you can use that. It supports the channel with no extra cost to you, and it's 62% off, which is freaking awesome. With that, again, if you want to see any specific videos regarding this new update, like a full breakdown of all the races and the factions and whatever like that, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll try to jump in. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.